My guest today is John Thomas. He is an actor and also an author. He just wrote a new graphic novel. And um, I'm going to read a little bit of his bio, and then we'll bring him on. John F. Thomas was born and raised in the small town of Humboldt, Tennessee. He grew up around both sides of his family, who could sing and drew his singing and performing talents from them. Wanting to develop these talents even further, he moved to Los Angeles, where he added the skills of acting and writing onto his resume. He is now finding himself extremely busy with multiple projects, like finishing performing in an original musical, Letters to Eve, and finishing writing his second book in a short book series called The Prodigy Series. He has no regrets as he keeps his vision strong and clear to achieve whatever he sets his mind to. So that's John F. Thomas, and I'm so excited to have him on the show today. I worked uh, at an upscale shopping district in L.A. Uh, for about, I guess, three or four months over the holidays, and that's where we met. And I found him to be incredibly like humble and thoughtful and insightful and interesting. And I'm excited that he's on the show today, and he's going to help us talk more about vision. So keep it here. Welcome back, everybody. This is the Welcome Table. I'm so happy to be here with you. Today we're talking about vision and the value of having a vision for for whatever it is, for your life, for your project, for, you know, your family, um, whatever you're doing, really finding a way to tap into the truest, most authentic purpose for why you're doing it so that you can really enjoy the journey to get there. And then when you're there, you feel fulfilled and happy. Um, and satisfied with the result. So my guest today is John Thomas. I did share some information about you from his bio in our last segment, but I want to welcome John to the show and give him a chance to tell a little bit about himself. Hi, John. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for being with me today. Tell the folks a little bit about you and what you do and uh, what vision means to you. Uh, so I am a uh, singer songwriter. Well, I started out as a singer songwriter. I'm from uh, Jackson, Tennessee, uh, or Humboldt, Tennessee, as he told you. And just all, all my life, I've been immersed uh, immersed around music. Uh, my father's side of the family sings. My mother's side of the family sings. So whenever we all got together, there was always some song being sung, or songs really. <laughs> so it was like five or six songs. We have to sing something before everyone leaves, and that really clued me into learning your part, learning your roles, you know, as far as harmonies, melodies, all of that stuff, so I got really good at that. So because of being involved with that, there's the performance mm-hmm. bug, the, the artistic bug attached to me, and uh, definitely was inspired by artists such as Marvin Gaye, R. Kelly, because they, they write in a way... Uh, such in a way that it really connects to you, no matter who you are, what experience you have. That it really, it really connects to you and, and reaches and touches you. So I was even inspired further from there. I wanted to do what they did. I wanted to create music. I wanted to write music that touched people, um, created these experiences. No matter where you are in the world, no matter who you are, or what you're experiencing, you can understand and you can relate. And that's the power of music, and it's uh, so amazing. So from there, I uh, got in choir, of course, was singing in church, uh, got an advanced choir in school. I happened to just fall into it, uh, which is fine. It's not like I was looking for it, but um, got into that and chamber chamber choir once I got out of college, got into a a cappella group in college, almost joined a jazz uh, jazz choir, or not really a choir, but a jazz group in college, which is like really, really highly esteemed at my college, but... I was too busy at the time that I graduated, ended up going uh, to Los Angeles and to pursue singing songwriting, but uh, I've also gotten interested in voice acting. Mm-hmm. So my, my, my vision, the vision was always there because I used to watch, um, you know, cartoons and I used to mimic what they do and I was like, oh man, it would be so fun to do what they did just to, to do these voices and you're having fun, you're enjoying yourself. So I took a class at UCLA Extension out here doing that just to, just to see what it's like, you know, just to, if I really want to do it. So I started planning from there to set myself up for success because I knew where I wanted to be. Um, and took the class, passed it. Uh, I was, wasn't the best, best, but I was learning. And I was one of the better students. And 
and just started doing different things from there, just even little small stuff. Uh, it probably doesn't even pay a lot, $5, $10, free. <laughs> yeah. Free stuff of uh, voiceover. And was doing that and pursuing music, and then eventually I got into acting uh, again, because I was acting just a little bit back in, back home in Tennessee, but uh, I really wanted to do that too. So uh, recently I was in this musical called Letters to Eve, and I'm, I'm able to perform, act, and sing. And I was one of the principal actors, and this was our second run recently, and you know, a lot of people loved it. And, I mean, I'm even on the, the poster, which... Uh, That's nice. In a sense, I, I, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's crazy. I, it, it's funny, the vision, because I always had a vision back home in Tennessee, but it seemed so far away. It seemed so out of reach, but I knew it was there. You know, I even had, which is funny, <laughs> now that I'm doing this, I even had, I always used to, you know, have, have the waking dream that, you know, sitting, sitting in, in the classroom and just kind of zone out and just imagine myself. Uh, being on some talk show or being yeah. sitting on the couch with whoever, Jimmy Kimmel, or it, which he wasn't there at the time, but, you know, just whoever. And now it's funny that I'm talking with you <laughs> about yeah. my, my experiences because I always used to dream about this. And I've been just been putting in the work, planning, executing, things failing. Okay, so how do I get around that? You know, to to make sure that my vision comes to pass. I spoke and, a little bit. I spoke a little bit about in the first. Um, in the first segment of the show, I spoke a little bit about vision and where and where it comes from and how we can find like a vision for our lives. I want to ask you, for you, you mentioned obviously that music was a big part of growing up. Did you have any other actors or entertainers in the family aside from music? Where do you think your vision for being an entertainer specifically came from? Where was that inspiration? Honestly, to, to being an entertainer, because my, my dad... It's kind of a, an entertainer. He's, not that he's necessarily a bigger than life kind of guy when he's talking. He's very approachable, very friendly when he, and everybody knows him. You know, no matter Jackson, Humboldt, where <laughs> everybody knows him in that area. And, um, it was interesting because when he would go, he's a teacher, but outside of that, when he, when he would perform, people, hey, can you sing at this place? Can you sing at that place? So he'd find little gigs where, oh, you know, uh, him and my uncle and some other friends of his, we're going to sing. You know, either choir set or, or it's going to be singing some old school R&B. Uh, but he, when he get on, when he hits that stage, he, in a sense, will become a different person. He mm. will become a little bit more grandiose. He, his movements will be a little bit broader because I, I believe, like, his, his dream when he was younger was to be an entertainer too, to be a singer. Uh, his, his famous, uh, the person he looked up to was James Brown. Mm. And even though, you know, he doesn't move or anything like James Brown, but he, you know, he, he has his own thing that he does. He, he, he still, but he doesn't even have to move that much because he captures you with his voice and he engages the audience. Uh, and I, I saw that and I was like, man, I think that that's what inspired me, even though I, I never really have thought about it until now. So honestly, that's a great question. <laughs> But that that probably initially triggered that to where like I want to do that. Yeah. I I want to to go after this. So that I think that helped plant the seed of like where I am now. It sounds like in some ways you uh, are like a continuation of perhaps your dad's dreams for his own life, which is such like a beautiful thing to consider. Like your dad had such specific dreams that he wanted for himself, and perhaps he didn't get quite all the way there. But now he has a son who is kind of carrying the torch in a way and moving forward even farther in the direction that he could even fathom or understand for himself. You're in L.A. now, and you're really moving in the direction fairly swiftly of perhaps the things that your father wanted. And I think that's beautiful. I want to hear you talk a little bit about that and what that might mean to you. We've got to take a break. We'll be right back in just a few minutes. All positive talk with a mature edge. HealthyLife.net Welcome back, everybody. This is The Welcome Table. We're still here today with you. We air the fourth Monday of every month at 9 a.m. There's another show at 9 p.m. We have a really special guest on today, John Thomas. He is a singer, um, an actor. He recently wrote uh, a book 
called the Prodigy Series, and um, we're talking about vision and what vision means to him. And before we went to the break, uh, John offered us some really beautiful uh, ways of understanding uh, where his inspiration for music came from, and it came from his dad. And it sounds to me that he's almost carrying a torch forward of maybe a dream that his father had that didn't quite come fully into view. But John seems to be doing a really interesting thing by just by nature of, of listening and just by nature of following his heart, of carrying that torch forward and moving in the direction of those dreams. Am I off base, or does that sound right, and how does that make you feel to hear that? No, man, I mean, actually, it, 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 it honestly it touches me, too. I, 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 like I said, I've never really, I thought, never really thought about it that much. What What is funny is that uh, my, even though my dad never really talked about it, it's just because it was like a different time, and you know, being uh, being black in America, especially during that time, you, you only had so many opportunities. And in Tennessee. So, yeah, exactly. And because you know, there, there's nothing. You're not in Detroit. You're you're not in New York. You're not, you're not in Los Angeles. So you're basically kind of like in a no man's land in 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 regards to the entertainment industry. Uh, and he was the oldest of his children. And he, in a sense, had a responsibility to be that leader for the rest. Uh, I mean, he's the oldest of, of his brothers and sisters. I'm sorry. And he he had that responsibility to show them he was the first in his family to go to college. And uh, from there, I married my mother and just had these kids, myself and my brother and my uh, other brother as well. And, you know, now he... And he can't really pursue his dream like he wants because, you know, he's putting him, him being a man first, being a husband first, being a father first. Mm-hmm. And I do appreciate him for that. So now that I've, I've seen that and he set that path, since I didn't have, I wasn't married yet, I didn't have kids, I was like, you know, let me take this opportunity that uh, wasn't really available for my dad and, and not let that chance go to waste because it would not only do myself an injustice, but do my father an injustice for not being able to fully pursue everything that I can mm. that's uh, available because things are a lot better now. It's still not the best, but it's a lot, a lot, lot more feasible to achieve your dream and go after your dream, uh, especially in today's in today's time. Yeah, I think you're right about that. And you also uh, spoke so beautifully about. Um, you offered us a really interesting metaphor for like singing and for being a musician and how it taught you early on to, to know your role, to know where you fit in. Do you feel like you know your role now, like in the world and in life, or is it something you're still kind of figuring out? Um, more so, I feel as though I know my role more now. You know, we're, we're, <laughs> it's funny, we're told all the time when we're younger, with age comes maturity. So when you're younger, you want to be everything. You want to be, you want to be this. You want to be that. I'm going to be the lead singer of everything. I don't, eat, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. And you're not really listening. And, that, and that's that's the main thing. You have to be able to listen. But like I said, with with age comes maturity. So um, and, and when I was younger, I only wanted to write. I didn't really care to write for too many other people, or having other people write for me. But now I'm at a point now where it's like, no, it it. it you have to be able to work with other people because you're shutting yourself out. You're 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 cutting your your own vision short from doing everything yourself. Like there's nothing wrong with figuring out how to do things, but you know there there are some things that people can do that are better than, that are better than you. Mm. And you have to acknowledge your shortcomings. Uh, f- figure out where your strengths are. Figure out where your weaknesses are. You can improve your weaknesses, but it's better to utilize your strengths and have those people who want to work with you, who have uh, those strengths in, in the areas where you have weaknesses, allow them to help you. As long as they mean you good, let these people in and let them help you grow to be who you envision yourself to be. And, and that's the most important thing that I've learned growing up. Yeah, I can't be everything, but I know what I can be now. And it's still it's still morphs and it's still changing, it still evolves as you get older, uh, because life is, is is not just a static thing. It's, it's fluid, you know, like water. It constantly changes. So mm. you have to kind of like be a chameleon and change with the times. But as long as you're true to yourself, that's what matters. Yeah, I think you're right about that. I think I, I think collaboration for me is like one of my like fundamental 
principles uh, in getting through life and understanding, you know, how to get things done. Because I think on some level we're all hopefully uh, moving in the same direction of trying to make the world a better place, and you have to be willing to connect with other people and collaborate and uh, do things together. I want to talk about your book. You um, really wrote a great series called the Progeny Series, and I think you're, like, not totally finished with it, but tell us about um, the book and what it's about and sort of why you decided to sit down and write something like this. So the uh, the, fir- the first book is the uh, yes yeah, it's a series uh, the project series and the first book is called Humble Beginning, which is, is is funny because I think that that title even resonated a lot more with people than I <laughs> than I thought it would. Because um, well, the funny thing is they thought it was about me, and I was like, well, no, not necessarily about me. In, in a sense, it's about all of us within the uh, let's say the black community uh, because you know we in a sense you're you're born kind of in a system that, that keeps you behind, in a sense, or, or and constantly wants to keep you behind. You're, you're constantly playing catch-up. So we have to work that much harder and and, and study that much harder and, and everything, you know, just, just be be two to three times better than your counterpart, mm. uh, which which is unfortunate, but, you know, it is what it is. But uh, So this book, I wrote this book because when I was growing up, I, I read so many fantasy action-adventure books, and majority of them they 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 had just the the heroes that were white which i don't have a problem with that but it was after a while it's kind of hard to relate especially when they bring in other characters that who are black and the way they describe them you know it's basically the same description it's uh dark very dark skin and has you know really big lips or just the way they they they, they describe them it's, it's not necessarily in the way that i would describe myself mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so in a sense, that would take me out of the experience, which was unfortunate. Still, great books, amazing books, but just that would take me out of the experience. So I was like, well, I want to write something, you know, that is not only for us, but can help teach other people about uh, just different cultures, mm-hmm. you know, different cultures, different people, and learn to embrace and accept them. Because the more that that information is out there, the more normal it becomes. You know, the same thing like with African American hair. Uh, it's, it's a little bit more coarse, but there's some strength to it. There's some softness to it. There's some shine to it. There's some, you know, there's some, there's some characteristics, some personality to it. Mm. You know, it's not just this one thing, this cookie cutter image. You know, and also that, you know, there's not just this one typical caricature of whatever culture that you're looking at. There's so many different shades. There's so many different personalities. You know, just basically, this person is human. And so um, from this book, I'm writing about this black child who's growing up in a, in a foreign land, and he's being bullied. And also there are people in this world that have these abilities that he just doesn't have because it is a fantasy book. Um, and he doesn't have it uh, yet, at least. So he's having to fight against both of those. One, he looks different, and two, he, he can't utilize these abilities that everyone else can use. So he, he's definitely behind behind the, uh, the bar and pushing and having to figure out different ways to play catch up. And uh, it's, it's a really it's a really sweet book to me, and it's, it's near and dear to me because my best friend and I created this story um, a while back. And uh, there's two main characters: my best friend character and my character. So from our main story, I scaled it back ten years to show the origin of my character's story. Mm. And that's this story here. So, and I'm writing, finishing up on the second book that should be released July 2nd of this year, 2017. And I'm I'm very excited about it. It's even going to be bigger and better than the first book. So, that's amazing. We got to take a quick break. More with John Thomas after the break. Welcome back. This is The Welcome Table. We're here with author, singer, actor, all-around renaissance man, John Thomas, the Tennessee Southern Gentleman. And we're talking about uh, his work. We're talking about his projects. His most recent project um, is a book series entitled The Prodigy Series. And um, I want to apply your book writing process to our topic for today um, as it relates to vision. And my first question is, did you have... A vision for the book 
or what you wanted the book to be before you started writing, or did you just kind of have a glimpse of an idea and then just start the work and you're going to let whatever happens, happens? Um, kind of a mixture of both. More so I, that I had the idea of, you know, what I wanted before I started doing it. Um, and then just the rest after that, um, I – so basically what, what happened, I, I was working – at uh, Kmart and then Home Depot, both doing overnight shifts. Wow. Uh, outside of, outside of, well, not, not both at the same time. I quit Kmart and then I went over to Home Depot. Mm. But, you know, just, just to get some extra money in L.A., L.A. is it's tough. <laughs> but uh, as I was doing that, my coworkers, they were just typically, you know, just listening to music, but, and I didn't want to do that. I wanted to listen to something that would inspire me, spark something in my brain. So I started listening to podcasts, self-help podcasts, uh, most, uh, more than anything. And one of them, one of the podcasts, he was telling, uh, the guy was giving advice on how to, to go forward with your vision, how to, how to get something started and to keep up with it. Because a lot of times, a lot of people, they, they say, oh, I, I, I don't have enough time or I, I would do this, but I'm doing that and I'm doing this and I don't have time to do that. And, you know, because your schedule is so busy, and by the time you want to do what you want to do, you're exhausted. So he was saying a way to get around this was to just put in 20 minutes of whatever you're trying to do. If it's playing the piano, uh, just put in 20 minutes. Because typically we would want to do 30 minutes to an hour. And he's saying, I know it sounds uh, small, but that 20 minutes will add up over time. Mm. So either that will be 20 minutes before bed or 20 minutes when you get up in the morning or 20 minutes in the middle of the day, whatever time, but 20 minutes is really nothing, you know, so you can do that, but it becomes something, you know, months later, you know, so, and that's what I did with my book. I had the idea if I wanted to put a book out there that showcases a black character in the forefront in a fantasy series, which is really rare, mm-hmm. and to show him as human and, 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 flawed here and there and he and, but he's trying to overcome he's trying to become the best hero in the world that he can be um and with that i put in the 20 minutes before bed as soon as i got up in the morning whatever that would be and sometimes because the juices would be flowing so much i if the 20 minutes could turn into an hour if i had the time uh or sometimes it'll just even the 20 minutes even if i'm not really feeling or getting anything I would put the 20 minutes in anyway. Mm. And if I, if it's something I didn't like the next day, I would go back, maybe delete two paragraphs. Oh, okay, so now, and I can reform. Okay, this, now this works, this works better. I can, I can make it, you know, made it work, or, and then even adjustments later on. So I was able to knock the book out in like basically two months, honestly, two, two to three months. Wow. Uh, during the, the 20 minutes a day, and it shocked myself because it was so scary because I've never, I've never written a book. <laughs> never, uh, I've wrote plenty of backstory because I, you know, for characters and things like that because I, I, I do that. But I was like, if I can do that, I, I should be able to write a book and, and I did it. Yeah. And, yeah. There's something so powerful to, to making a small drop, you know, in the bucket. And I think that's, that's kind of the key is, you know, you're not going to have much gas if you sort of sprint all the time. And when you really fully understand that life is a life is a marathon, the journey we're on is a marathon, you have to find ways to enjoy the process of it. Just start making small drops in the bucket. Over time, if you're consistent and if you are diligent about it, you'll look up one day and you have a bucket full of, and your bucket will be overflowing. And that's, I think, the brilliance of what you just said is this idea of just kind of being diligent and taking a step every single day in the direction. And before you know it, You'll be there. How do you think you have changed as a person or as an artist as a result of working on this project? This, this, this project really opened up my eyes and to, and to allow myself to be open for even more criticism because I'm placing this out to the world. And, that, and that's probably one of the most the, the scariest things for a lot of people, even more so as an artist. I mean, you, you can can understand but even as an artist you're used to that but when you're doing something completely new that's like in a sense foreign to you that's still something you have to get over like to, to I'm putting this out there for everyone to judge me <laughs> and 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 that's the thing and to even to do something that that you aren't necessarily used to doing because you're basically you're stuck in your routine that you're doing every day 
And we, we as humans, we get comfortable. We just get comfortable with doing the norm. And it, it's, it's hard to get uncomfortable sometimes with, if, if you have a desire to do something, and, and, to, and to change your circumstances, you have to do something outside of the norm. And even going back to like the small drops in the bucket, I mean, you can even relate that to when people say, oh, just put $20 in from your check or put $30 in from your check every week into an account and don't touch it. After a few months, you'll look into that account and be like, wow, mm-hmm. I have, you know, $400 that I, you know, and it was just five bucks in there, you know, whatever. And it's, it's the same thing applies. But, you, you you have to, and and also you you can be your biggest critic, and you you well you are your biggest critic. You 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 are the one that's holding yourself back more than anyone else. I mean there there are probably other people who are saying this and that or whatever about you, but ultimately it's up to you to allow that to hinder you, or you can just push yourself and that out of the way and say I'm just gonna do it. Whatever will happen will happen, and at least, if anything, you'll get the experience for it. You'll you'll learn a lesson from it, or you'll you'll get something out of it. And even if you fail, hey, you know how to do it better next time. You know what not to do the next time you do it. So why not just just take a take take a leap out on faith, work out a plan, and man, find out ways to make it happen. If, and even if people say no, there's somebody that's gonna say yes. Somebody right. will. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not going to be tomorrow. It might not be next week. But maybe it's a month from now. But you and it, it does get tiring and and there, it's disappointing and you feel like you're the only person doing it. But you you have you have to keep pushing. You have to keep trying because even with like you know practicing for basketball or football or your basketball, you're shooting, you're shooting, you're shooting. You keep missing, keep missing. After a while, you start you start getting in the net. You start becoming better. You're your dribbling gets better, so it, it, it just takes persistence and it takes dedication, and you you have to push yourself to become better, and you'll get there. Wisdom, 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 wisdom from the Southern gentleman. We have a minute left in this segment, and I want you to take a minute and tell people where they can find out more about you, how they can connect with you, and where they can read or buy a copy of the book series. For sure, uh, you can just go to my website www.johnfthomas.com J-O-H-N <laughs> and uh, yeah just go there you can find out anything about me as far as acting anything about me in the singing world and also with my book series I have a tab for that and if you just want to go to my website you can do it by it there or if you want to go to Amazon buy it there um, and also if you buy it please leave a review I would love it <laughs> Reviews help, especially us indie artists, uh, since I'm not a big corporation just yet. But, uh, yeah, just, just send some love. Um, if you buy my copy, I appreciate it. And I'd like to hear your thoughts, uh, how I can make this series even better than, if, if, than it is right now. Thank you so much, John. I so appreciate you being with me today. And, uh, folks, connect with John F. Thomas. It's been such a pleasure. Thanks, John. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> 